Asian American lawmakers are pressing the White House to do more to fight what they say are systemic inequalities facing the AAPI community. On Thursday, leaders from the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus met with the president and the vice president in the Oval Office. The meeting comes one day after the Senate advanced a bill to address the spike in hate incidents targeting Asian Americans during the coronavirus pandemic. The measure aims to simplify the recording and review of hate crimes for law enforcement. A final vote is expected to happen next week. Here's how President Biden responded to the vote. We need to stand with the AAPI community uh, and the whole government response with uh, what we have to get done. Kamala and I uh, are heartened by the Senate's overwhelming bipartisan effort yesterday. Uh, the senator for uh, the passage of the Hate Crimes Act. Uh, that's a big deal. I mean, it was really close, only, what, 98 <laughs> votes? Well, I tell you what. It was really nice. <laughs> uh, well, it was not. I thought it was going to pass, but my Lord, yeah, I tell you. The Biden administration has also answered calls for increased representation. On Wednesday, Erica Moritsugu was named Asian American and Pacific Islander Senior Liaison. Nationally, the AAPI community is poised to build on political engagement in the 2020 election. In Georgia, a state President Biden won by just under 12,000 votes. Asian American voters doubled turnout from 2016. With the increased visibility, some are looking to share their experiences about what it's like to be of Asian descent living in America. Michelle Yu is the co-founder of Red Envelope Stories, which aims to give voice to Asian identity, and she joins me now. Michelle, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. Tell us more about your newsletter. How did it come about? Yeah, my friends and I often have conversations about being Asian American and what our identity means um, living in America. And we really wanted to present a way for others to understand and gain more insight into the Asian American experience by offering short and accessible um, narratives of the Asian American experience. So what we realized was sometimes the information was too dense where it didn't really relate or resonate with people. And by having these personal stories, you can really understand the emotions and feelings and day to day of the Asian American experience. So I'm curious, Michelle, how has this project changed understanding of maybe some common stereotypes and AAPI experiences? Yeah, definitely. So what we really want to do with this newsletter is highlight the intersectionalities within the Asian American community and the Asian community and what's not being talked about. So sometimes you have these overarching narratives of wanting to be white or not accepting yourself, but there's so much more than that. We've received submissions from across the world just about being trans and being in the military and Asian, or being in a sorority and being Asian. And there's so many different parts of someone's identity. It's not just about being Asian. And we want to highlight that Asian, being Asian, being Asian American is one part of the story that plays into a larger story of what it's like to be in, in the society as an Asian. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's interesting, Michelle, you started this project, as I understand, because of a shift in your own personal thinking and in your words, unlearning uh, that you had to do around your own identity. Are you seeing a similar shift happen with others? Yeah, I think what's really important is reflecting upon your racial identity, because sometimes people don't realize it until too late that race actually plays a large part about, a large part in how others view us um, for better or for worse. And what I came to discover here at Brown through my sociology classes is that you can still be first and foremost viewed as Asian, no matter what job you have, no matter where you attend a university. And that's a phenomenon called racialization. And by studying, um, these concepts of race, reading scholars such as Min Zhao and Jennifer Lee, I've come to understand that being Asian is always going to be a part of my identity. And to understand myself better in that way can make me all the more in tune with what I want in my life. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, overall, Michelle, what changes do you want to see in the AAPI community? And how is your newsletter a part of that? Yeah, I think I want people to understand the stories of Asian Americans, Asians better, because 
sometimes these stories aren't being captured by the media. They aren't, some people don't have Asian friends. And by reading these stories, not only do Asian Americans, Asians feel in tune with their own community and and they're, they, they have the time to reflect and really understand their own identity, but also other people can challenge their stereotypes and notions of what's like be um, Asian in this society because we we occupy a very tenuous position in um, the American racial structure and by understanding where we fit and how we can challenge that to reach new levels of equity and equality I think that's really powerful yeah, you know, and I've talked to so many people in the AAPI community in recent weeks, especially, who are saying this feels to them like an inflection point where they feel it is so important to elevate and hear these stories uh, from people in the AAPI community. Michelle Liu, Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.